I was listening to the bishop preach and he was going at it, and then all of a sudden, the Lord dropped it in my spirit. I said, Thank you, Jesus. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, God, our Father, it's once more to we come to you, Father, and give praise into your holy name. God, and we give you glory, and honor and praise, for thou art God from everlasting to everlasting. And Father, I thank you that you have allowed me to stand in your poor people.
So Jesus often went to places alone to pray. Yes. And he also went to this place because it was a place you know, of quietness and solitude because he had some what would seem to be bad news to tell his disciples. Mm -hmm. And if you read further down into the scriptures, you'll see that he was about to tell them that he had to go to Jerusalem to suffer many things of the religious people yes. yeah. and they were going to kill him. Mm -hmm. So the setting is this. So he asked, the who do men say that I the Son of Man am? Mm -hmm. Now Jesus has been in public ministry now for probably a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And he has done things that no other man has ever done. Yes, yes. He's healed the sick. Yes, he's raised yeah. the dead. He yeah. has cast yeah. out demons. Yeah. And uh, he has, has opened the eyes of the blind. He's opened the pe people's ears who have been deaf. Mm -hmm. Now no man in the history of mankind has ever done those things. And so he's asked the question, well, who did they say that I am? Because if you ask this question, you can't say well, he was just an ordinary man. Uh -huh. Ordinary men can't raise the dead. No, ordinary yeah. men cannot stop undeaf, uh, unstop deaf ears. Yeah. Right. They cannot open the eyes of the blind. Right. So in verse 14 he says, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, mm -hmm. some say Elias, and others say Jeremiah, so one of the prophets. So first they say, that the disciples say, the people say that he may have been John the Baptist. See, the disciples regularly converse with the people in the community. So they would know what their opinions of Jesus was because if you're raising the sick, if you're raising the dead, and if you're healing the sick, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the topic of conversation wherever you go. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so his disciples said, and they said, well, he's John the Baptist. Why John the Baptist? Well, first of all, John the Baptist was one that was the King Herod, who was in, in, in ruler of the known world at that time. He had placed John the Baptist in prison, and he beheaded him. And he thought that John the Baptist has come back to life. And so he started a rumor that it's John the Baptist. You know? That's what it is. And everybody else started saying it's John the Baptist. And then some of them say Elias. Elias is actually Elijah. Elijah, remember, is the, the prophet of the Old Testament who he never died, but he was taken up into heaven in the world. And some also believe that he's the same one who's spoken of in the book of Revelation that is one of the two witnesses that's going to preach during the tribulation period. And he's going to be killed and God's going to raise him up and take him to heaven. Mm -hmm. See, now, the Jews believe that Elijah was to come before the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So they believed that this was Jesus. They didn't see he was the Messiah. They thought he was Elijah because Elijah was to come before the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so he said, or one of the other prophets. Now they also had a rumor or suspicion that when good men died, their souls went into the bodies of other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those peoples had um, powerful virtues in them when they were raised from the dead. So now he said, but now comes the great question. Jesus says unto them, he said, but whom do ye say that I am? Now Jesus has been with his disciples for probably about two years now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he said, now his disciples ought to know him. You know me better than they do. You've seen me work these miracles. Yes. You've seen what I can do. I've even given you power yes. over unclean spirits, and you've been able to heal the sick and to raise the dead. So who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, in verse 16, we see the Apostle Peter, who is the spokesman of the group. Apostle Peter being the one who was more bold than any of the other disciples. If you remember, he was the same one who cut off the man's ear yes. when they came to arrest Jesus in the garden. So Simon Peter being bold, he says that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. <clears throat> now, Simon Peter answered, thou art the Christ. The Christ, the Christ, the Greek word for that is Christos, which means the anointed one, yes. the Messiah, the one who was prophesied and sent by God. Yes. Then he calls him the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. The son meaning the one who is of the very essence and nature of God himself. And then he calls God the living God. The living God is what separates God from all idols. Mm -hmm. Idols were gods, but they were not living gods. That's true. They had eyes, but they could not see. They had ears, but they could not hear. Yes. They also had mouths, but they could not talk. That's right. That's right. So this is a very decorative statement because this is the very foundation on which the church is built. Because of the fact that Christ is the Son of the Living God, yes. is what build is what the church, the universal church, is built upon that very fact. Mm -hmm. So now we go to verse 17, <clears throat> and it says, um, "Jesus answered Peter. He says, 'Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, 
For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Now he calls Peter Simon Bar-Jonah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? Well, you see, Bar is a Syriac word which means son of. Jonah is the name of Peter's father, which is uh, Jonas. So you can reread this to say, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonas. So flesh and blood have not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Yes. In other words, Peter, you didn't learn this through human wisdom. That's, That's right. right. That's you, right. Didn't, you, didn't earn, you didn't learn this by going to some school. That's right. That's you, know, right. you didn't learn this by some rumor that was uh -huh. going around, but you, you learned this through divine revelation. Yes. My right. Father in heaven has revealed this to you. That's right. And do you not know that the only way that you and I are going to know who God is yes. is through the divine revelation. Hallelujah. It's not true by reading the book. That's right. Because you read the book and you gain certain facts about God. You learn some things about him. But to know him uh -huh. personally and intimately, it has to be through and by the agent of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit will open the eyes of your understanding yes. so that you can see and perceive spiritual right. truths. Yes. The reason why the Jews did not see Jesus as the Messiah is because they were spiritually blind. That's right. That's they right. were looking for the wrong things. That's they were looking for a yes. king yes. to set up a kingdom who was going to deliver them from their Roman oppressors. Uh -huh. They could not see because they were spiritually blind. That's right. But there were some people, some Jews, who could see. That's right. One of them was John the Baptist. Right. John the Baptist could see. Yes, God has opened his eyes. Because when, when John was baptizing Jesus yes, in the lake, God says, the one whom you see the Spirit of God descending That's and it. resting on him, that is my son. That's because yeah. John had a lot. He, he baptized a lot of people. Yes. Yes. There was only one that's that the Spirit one. rested upon. Yes. And that he said, this one is Jesus. And that's what John knew. But then his, also his disciples knew. Mm -hmm. His disciples knew that uh, Christ was in fact the one whom God had sent. Now, they knew that also through divine revelation. Yes. God had shown him that that this was, in fact, the Christ. That's why when Jesus went to look for his disciples, he just went up to these men and said, come follow me. Yeah. They left their jobs, they left their families, and went to follow him. Now, what person That's right. in their right mind, if somebody just walks up to you and says, come on and follow me. You say, I don't know you. I ain't going nowhere. But, but the reason that these, these men knew that he was the Christ is because the Lord had opened up the eyes of their understanding. Yeah. So they can see and perceive a spiritual truth that this was, in fact, the Christ. Now, Jesus himself said that my sheep know me and I'm known of yeah. mine. They right. hear my voice and they follow me. That's the word. The sheep were the disciples. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, these disciples, amen were God's sheep. That's why they followed him whenever he called them. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Amen, but amen. Um, my question for you today, beloved, is who is Jesus to you? Yes. Yes. Is he just another character in the Bible? Ah, no he, no he. Is he just another prophet? Ah, no he, no he. Or is he, has he become more than that yes. to you? Is yes. he your Lord? Is he your Savior? That's it. Is he the one that delivered you yes. from the power of darkness yes. and no brought he. you into his kingdom? Amen. Now, I don't know what your answer to this question would be. Uh -huh. But if you ask me, uh -huh. Who is Jesus to you, Brother Perry? The first thing I say is that Jesus Christ, he is my Lord and my Savior. And then because I remember the day that the Lord saved my soul. And then it goes all the way back to the year of 2000. It was about January the 1, about 1 o'clock in the morning. And then I remember I had to go to a watchman service. And then I didn't go to the altar, but I went home. And then I still, I felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And then I knew I needed to pray. And then when I got down on my knees, and then I began to call on the God of heaven. And then I saved my soul. And then I felt the power of God 
come into my life. Amen. And I knew that the spirit of the Lord was in me. Amen. And I began to see Jesus from a different perspective. Amen. I no longer saw Jesus as just another character in the Bible. Amen. But I began to say Jesus for who he really is. Amen. If I look in the book of St. John, the 14th chapter and the 6th verse. Amen. I said, Jesus, that's my only way to heaven. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man. St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. The Bible said, I see Jesus equal as God. And the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. And that Word was Jesus. And then if I look at Colossians, the first chapter and the 16th verse, I see Jesus as creator of all things. And the Bible says that by him were all things created. In heaven and that are in earth. And then if I look in the book of St. Matthew, it's that 28 chapter in the 18th verse, I see Jesus with all power. Jesus says all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. If I look in the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter in the 16th verse, I say Jesus as King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. A name is written on his vesture. And upon his thigh and during the battle of Armageddon. I mean, if I look in the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter, eighth and the ninth verse, I see Jesus as our Redeemer. And then the Bible says that the four beasts and the elders in heaven fell down before Jesus, worshiping him, saying, You are worthy to take the book and open the seals. For you were slain and has redeemed us to God by your blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people and nation. And if I look in the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, in the I see Jesus as the healer of my soul. The Bible said that he was wounded for our transgressions. He bruised our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I'm healed. And if I look in the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, in the 19th verse, God have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. The things in heaven, the things in the earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can you say amen? message for today. Woo!